Hey folks, welcome back to another episode of D-Ray's Garage, where after much deliberation and procrastination, I decided to go full tilt and get the numeric short shifter kit, uh, combined with uh, the lever with the three adjustment points and cables and all. Now, I did get the full kit. I think there's a small uh, savings if you buy the whole kit. And if you go to Renlist, you might find a coupon to save you a hundred bucks. Um, and then here are the silicon wrappers. Some of the, one of the complaints that you may hear about these cables is some noise. Generally speaking, this unit is a more mechanical feel. So uh, anyway, I'm gonna be removing the OEM short shift kit and I'll show you that part. But I'm going to refer you to NorCal 987 video for some of this because where I'm bringing you in is where I'm starting to remove the old cables and hopefully install the new ones relatively pain-free fashion. And I will also post my old uh, video to this. I did do the short shift kit where I've taken out the console and whatnot. I've spared you that this time. Those two videos will get you there. NorCal's is a little better because the, the audio on my video from a year or so ago is pretty awful. So forewarned is forearmed as they say. Equipment wise, uh, at some point I'll be lifting the car up and you'll see that. I have a 15, 10, 14, 13, 10 open end box wrenches and ratchet wrenches to get some of the items out. I've got a 10 and a 13 mil socket here uh, and an adapter for my drill. And then this is a specific tool from Numeric to tighten these guys down. Um, I guess that's because you have to wrap it over and um, we're gonna get some really tight spaces there. My hope is um, that we give you enough light in there to see what's going on. Here's a knife, gloves, uh, Torx bits. You'll need Torx bits extraordinaire to get the console out. It's T25, T20, T30, so the whole kind of gamut there for the various panels that you'll be removing. Anyway, um, this is the stuff. Very high quality uh, kit, really nice stuff. Nice metal, solid feel. And uh, yeah, let's see. Uh, how it goes in. All right, so as you can see here, we're uh, staring at the exposed short shift kit for OEM from Porsche. I gotta take this off, I just did that to move it over. Uh, if you don't remember from the other videos, if you do have the OEM, there's just a little knobby here and you twist that around, it allows you to uh, launch the gear stick off. I, I use the race thing, aftermarket one anyway. Uh, here are four 10 mil, I think they're nuts, yep. And then we're gonna have to take the handbrake as well. So I'm gonna lower that down so it doesn't create stress. And then this is 13, four 13 millimeter doohickeys. Now to get to this nut under here, I'm gonna have to leave it up for a minute. So I'll be monkeying with that. So let's get this out of here, free up these cables and then we'll, uh, we'll kind of head to the, the firewall here and down into the back as we chase these cables all the way back to the transmission. All right, and we're gonna have to free up these cables here in order to take this uh, whole get up off. So. So these are just pressure fit in here. Probably some channel locks would make my life easier, but I much prefer chancing my life on a screwdriver and knocking that into myself or something else. All right, you know what? I need to loosen these up first. So let's push that in, twist it. See that I push that back, push it back. Easier said than done. Pop this out. So now these cables are Fully released at this end. Now we just got to release at the back here. One, two. Since here's my set screw that I dropped in there earlier from my brace thing. And then under here, we'll see whether or not we wind up removing the carpet to let the gear shifter go down lower. But because it's got a channel here cutting the carpet I think we can accomplish two things one let it go down there we'll see two keep the insulation and noise down by uh, keeping the carpeting in there. all 
All right, now we'll uh, flip over and take this firewall off and see what's going on back here. So I'm gonna have to ask you to bear with me here as I go freehand and hopefully I'll try and keep it as steady as I can. So that's where the gearbox came out. This is where we've loosened up the handbrake. And then this is where we're headed next. So you can see how, I'm gonna kind of pass you through here. The cables go up through the firewall. There's a little channel here. One's for the handbrake and this little section here helps the cables pass through. Probably gonna have to cut this to um, get these out of here and then replace that and then this bracket too. So that passes up through here. And then as we come through the other side, we're gonna be pulling these cables out this way here as they lead down to the transmission. Yep, that's the lay of the land here. Next step, I'll uh, situate the camera where you can see these cables popping up through there. First of all, I'm gonna have to cut this little rubber doohickey so we can free the cables. Oh yeah, it's a tight fit. Okay, that's one. Second one in theory is easier because there's more room, right? All right. Okay, so. There's the front side, all cleared out here. Next up, I'm gonna lift up the car so we can go underneath. I'm going to get the new cables uh, inserted through here and fed up front, not necessarily situate them completely, but just so I can start putting Humpty Dumpty back together here. So I'm gonna put this in here. I've set the handle at the center position. So there's three options. The furthest down will kind of put you in interference with this carpet and there is a cavity here so there's room um, for that play. I'm not going to put the console back in when I first set it up. I want to see if I like it here or if I want a longer throw or a shorter throw and cross those bridges when we get to them. Now I'm going to try and pull one of these cables through. Should start appearing on your screen momentarily. And what you'll notice, or especially when you get your own, is Numeric does you a favor of labeling these. Now, one, it tells you whether it's the transmission or the gearbox end, and then two, it tells you a left or right. And this one is for the reverse gear, which I'll need to know when I get back in the trans to make sure I set in the right spot there. But up here, the reverse gear ties to this connector right there. So let's borrow some miles here. Just kind of get a general orientation set up. Try not to lose sight of too many of your other cables that are routing through here to where you uh, create yourself a problem for later on. Okay. Okay, so hopefully you can kind of make out what 
this is like I assume this is kind of a, a a soft fit, but this is where the cables are. This is your rear. This is going to ultimately this little receiver is going to have the ball from the gear lever pushed in here. We have little um, caps that we place, but we're not going to do any of that until we've got all the uh, measurements in place because we need to make sure that the gear um, distances allow all the gears to engage. So um, I think we get to the messy, stinky and dark part of the job at the transmission side now. All right, you two. This is the ultimate test of man versus woman. And I've got Amanda right in, under a light. So this should be legitimately unfair. Where do I have to start? So try and get it up to the end here. It doesn't matter which way you start as long as you... Wait, don't... Three. Wait, you have to explain. You can't know going in. So, start here. You already started. Yeah, start wait, here. Wait, wait. Okay. Go. This is, this is the part where we're fighting on the same space. I want to come up front. All right, I'm done. I have a conference call. Okay. All right, so now we've got that all wrapped. We've got to find, so this is the one that co controls the reverse. So we'll send it down this side, find the brackets when we go down there. This one inside the tubing from the throttle body and the intake. All right, so let me give you an orientation of where I'm at here. So I'm at the back passenger side of the car coming underneath. And there is the connector. This is for the reverse uh, side of the cabling. And then that is where the cable is attached by the spring-loaded mechanism, much like it was at the front. So I want to show you this before I get my hands all up in there and you can't really see. So I need a pry tool. That is a tool that I forgot to mention that we will need and I didn't get it out yet. So let me go get that and get situated and let's see if we can get these bad boys out. So if I, if I did a good job here, you might actually be able to see me do this while I'm doing it. Okay, that one's off. Let's see if we can get it off of the thing here. Oh, I don't know if you can make it out, but there's kind of these teeth hooking into this. So I'm gonna get some channel locks. Put a squeeze on that. And uh, I reckon we can persuade that one out too. All right. Hallelujah. 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 So I don't think I'm going to have an easier time showing you this side because this side looks even worse, but you know, as far as filming and getting my arm in there, but you can kind of see where the linkage connects there. That looks painless enough. The cable, however, if it puts up as much of a fight as its brother on the other side, that's even harder to get any kind of purchase on. So I'm going to tackle this next. You may or may not see it on camera but hopefully you've noticed that this is the left side of the transmission, the driver's side. And uh, we'll be back here shortly installing the new stuff too. So this side was off. It was a pretty good fight, but what I figured was these channel locks were definitely the way to reach in behind here and get a grab on the thicker part of the cable up there and then just kind of tease it out. So channel locks would be my recommendation. You gotta kind of finagle your arm through all these goofy spaces, but not so bad. Had a good fight with the uh, little ball and socket deal up here, but uh, you know, we won. Probably took about 15 minutes as opposed to 10 minutes on the other side, but some of that is just having the gumption to go after it. So let's see if we can feed the new cables down here. And uh, I'm a little bit worried about the IPDM plenum, plenum throttle body, because that's all metal casing and it looks pretty tight back up in there. I don't know if you can see that, but you're looking at the throttle body and the, the intake, so 
yeah, might be interesting still. All right, so as I don't forget, I'm gonna put this little cap on this bowl here, which is going to ultimately accept this cable. But first I've got to get this secured in the bracket back here, which you'll see when my, my hands are out the way. So the routing is there. <clears throat> Okay, a little tricky. Okay. So All right, so it's under the bracket up there. Hopefully you can see that. Okay connected in here. So now I've just got to get the this tightened down and we can start to worry about whether we've got enough here for the back and forth needed for the actuation of the gears. All right, so up in here, you can see how this is on the passenger side. We're fully buttoned down over there where the bracket holds on. And then we have inserted the ball joint in, remembering the little plastic cap that needs to go on there first. I will also show you this side, which was far tighter and just no way for me to get a camera in here with me as well. Same thing. Bracket is just extremely tight back there. And then put it onto the ball joint again. So this guy, you need to be able to get it to the full extent of the travel. So you need to pull and push the lever as far as possible and get where you're pulling and pushing the extent of the shifter cable about half a head um, each way beyond the travel of the actual actuator up here, which if I can, is this it? Uh, so right here, if you push and pull, um, yeah, I can't quite do it right now because I don't have a good angle. Push and pull on that all the way forward and then you've got to get it half a stroke, half a head longer and half a head longer on the fo full forward stroke and the full backward stroke. Okay, so we're back up the front here. I'm going to tighten these cables in because I feel like they're in a good spot here. It's a little tricky getting to both of these, but uh, we'll get it figured out. And then looking at this cable here, um, you wanna get this adjusted to where you want your stick shifter. So I didn't put on the cap yet that will help me cinch this in because I want to be able to plug this in here without it staying for now. So right now you probably can't see the angle very well, but it's leaning forward a little bit. So I need to extend it some. Let's try that. Yeah, that's that's pretty close. That'll probably work for me. So, oops, cinch that all down. We'll get a couple of uh, wrenches and tighten that in. But that is that seems good there. And then over here, I need to find a Torx driver to put this reverse cable on. I came into the car now, connected in, as you saw, this rear. And what you'll see is when I'm adjusting this, this screw set here, you'll see how it moves left to right. So obviously we want it ideally pretty vertical without any lean. And then you'll tighten that up with two once you get it. And then 
I can feel it engage the rear, or reverse, I should say. So you hear that? A familiar sound. However, and I haven't put the cap on this yet, I can get into first, but I cannot get back into second. I can get into third, but I can't get back into fourth. So I've got to go make some adjustments back there so I can get that lever to go all the way back. I still have not put this cap on here and uh, set that in there. So I'm having an easy time. You know, I just have to hold it in there, cradle it, and then kind of I can figure out where I'm going. But it seems like all of the, you know, one, three, and five, one, there's three, one, three, five. Oops, lost it. Let's pull it out. So we're, that's in neutral. So that all feels normal, but I just can't get the lever to come all the way back here with this connected in. So I'm gonna go back there and make some adjustments and I'll let you know how that all goes down. All right, I've made the adjustments, so let's see if we can get it back into, whoops. Again, I haven't set the cap on here yet, but let's go to, oh, I may have to, but. One. Oh, I still, I can't get it back. Well, that's frustrating. Not sure what to do next. Well, D-Ray, that's pretty depressing. Hopefully, most of you don't run into that. You can see there's absolutely no room there by the intake, and basically the line is kinked. So I reached out to Dan over at Numeric Racing, and I sent him some pictures, and he identified that for me. So basically, I had to set about the task of removing uh, this intake here. And if you have an IPD Planet and throttle body, some of you are going to have silicone and some of you are going to have aluminum. The aluminum one is a killer. Anyway, you have to accept that in this particular upgrade, you are going to go without instructions. You want to see me not having fun? This is me not having fun. Flying without wings. So just kind of go into that with your eyes open. These videos are intended to assist you. And uh, I run into this roadblock. You may run into others. Otherwise, it's a pretty plug and play exercise. Uh, all in all, pretty um, satisfied now. I was definitely stressed at the time. And my next video, what I will do is I will do driving impressions, talk about the length of the throw, whether or not I want to shorten the, the uh, lever, and kind of go from there and give more of the driving impressions. But for the time being, we're set, locked, and loaded. And uh, yeah, another one in the books. Thanks for being on, everyone. Be memorable, be well, and I'll see you on the next one.